All right, we've all gone on holiday, gone on that break. <laughs> uh, Stephen, has anything changed in Brexit talks when we and coming back here? Well, I think for Theresa May, she still believes that Santa Claus is out there because she wants to give a lot more to the European Union after we've left. I think it's going to be gift after gift after gift. And the reality is she hasn't changed. She's kept her vision that she wants to have this withdrawal agreement. For those of us who campaign to Brexit, who have links into the groups who are fighting for what we regarded the original Brexit, which is a WTO deal, they're still firmly in that camp. The DUP are still firmly against her view. So you've got this massive impasse that was there before Christmas, and it's going to continue now. And mm. so she has got a really hard job to try and convince anyone that her deal actually matters. And as you said there, there's 200 MPs who will now vote against going to a WTO deal. So, Selvi, it's pre-Christmas. Post-Christmas, exactly the same. So where does that leave us? Yeah, nothing has changed. Welcome to Britain in 2019, <laughs> where they have literally organised a traffic jam yeah. to test a no-deal Brexit, expecting 150 lorries to turn up. I think only 80 did. Uh, the government has managed to sign a £40 million contract with a ferry company, again, to try and cope with no deal, a ferry company that actually owns no ferries. Uh, and uh, Theresa May insists that things are changing, or she hopes things will change, in the sense that uh, she is continuing to negotiate with the European Union uh, to try and extract more ahead of this exactly. crucial vote uh, next week. But fundamentally, things have not changed. Uh, Stephen's right in the sense that, you know, there is still a large number of Brexiteers MPs who are not going to vote for this deal, along with the DUP, along with the opposition parties, which means that at the moment, unless she's going to pull a rabbit out of the hat... <laughs> She's going to lose that vote. So there are suggestions but, that we could see movement from this side. Yeah, I was going to ask that. Next what, week. what do you think about that, Kathleen? If she, when, she, when she comes here and tries to get concessions, more concessions from Europe, from the EU, do you think that's anything in that side has changed? I don't think either. I don't think post-Christmas, after Christmas, things has changed a lot also on that side. I think coming from the other side of the EU and if I would be British, which I'm not, I would be a <laughs> Remainer, um, to, be, to be very honest on that. But coming from, from the other side, I think, um, I think you should be open. If we can help to make a better deal so that in Britain they can, the MPs can vote for a deal, uh, we need to do that. But there's, I don't see how, how we can do that um, without um, making the EU more vulnerable. Um, and in that sense, for me, it's really very odd. I'm, I've always been a... A, a big admirer of the UK. Yeah? Um, no, no, I'm not laughing with it, but with a lot, of, I'm, I'm looking with such an astonishment to what is happening right now, um, especially from a political point of view. Um, I think the MPs, all MPs, opposition, uh, governing party, they should regain a little bit of senses. Mm. Eh? Either they go for this deal, um, or either they go for another referendum. But I don't see any but, other solution and isn't coming that, up. Isn't that the point, Stephen, that you campaign for Brexit, mm -hmm. you wouldn't want to have seen two and a half years later, essentially no decisions made on a whole swathe of, uh, of issues from citizens' rights through to aviation. No decisions being made on that yet. Uh, second of all, you know, the, the, the Cabinet... The UK cabinet have in recent weeks been discussing what to do about food shortages. Mm -hmm. that's, not, that's not the sunny, optimistic Brexit that no, you guys it's, offered, it's, is it? Certainly, it's not the sunny, optimistic Brexit I campaigned for. And the main reason for that is because they didn't put Brexiteers in charge of running the... Uh, the kind of negotiations afterwards. They, they left it because well, Theresa May is a Remainer, the whole of the Cabinet Remainer. That's a not Remainer. the issue, I think. And what we should have done, what we should have done very clearly from the start, is said our position is that of a WTO deal, which is what most of us really wanted in the first instance, we go for that fairly quickly, and if you do that situation, then we can go for a proper negotiation of a trade deal based on an FTA scenario. And don't forget, the FTA wasn't dismissed by Tusk. It was actually accepted as a principle, the Canada deal by Barnier. The only reason we're in this mess is because we have essentially a Remainer-led government with Remainer advisors and a Remainer civil service who do Kathleen not disagrees. have that. Okay, let's no. give her very quickly, very quickly. I've, I've seen Boris Johnson, not, no longer in the government, but he was a Brexiteer. Yes, three um, against so many. many. 
Yeah, but doesn't I think in, in political life um, you have a, a, a moment where you can have a referendum or elections or whatever and then people campaign and after that you need, you need to take the vote seriously but then get your senses back. Eh? Mm -hmm. What is the best for Britain and for Europe? You don't care about Europe but I care oh, about no, no, I and Britain no, that's, and Europe. That's a little unfair. But, we okay, do obviously okay, seriously. Okay, okay. But I, I care about both of them is to make a good deal. And this is the starting point of a deal and let's move from there. Um, and otherwise asking to the Brits, why not go for another referendum? <laughs> okay. And, and of okay, course, that. Theresa May would say, Stephen, that, you know, her deal is reflective of the entire right. country. The vote was 52-48 yeah, yeah. at the end okay. of the day. Well, yeah, but Before, of course we never do that in any other election, do we? Before we that, we'll, let, let, let's, let's go to London first, because, you know, Theresa May faces another setback to her Brexit deal ahead of next week's Parliament vote. We know that. Now, but for more, let's go to our correspondent, Vincent McAvenny, joining us live in London. Vinny, so tell us what happened today. Good evening, Tessa. Well, MPs returned after their Christmas break, and there isn't much sign that the festive cheer has convinced any of them that they should back the Prime Minister. It seems everyone here at Westminster is still in the trenches where they were before Christmas on their positions next week. We're going to have five days of debate and then the vote on the 15th. And earlier on today, I spoke to Sam Gima, who was a member of Theresa May's government up until his resignation in December, and he was giving a speech uh, nearby here and I asked him afterwards about that resignation and the government's no deal plans. Well the, the principal reason for making the speech is that this week um, the Prime Minister's deal is going to be debated again in Parliament with a vote in a week's time and I wanted to set out why I will be voting against that deal. Essentially her deal is one in which we surrender our veto our voice and our vote in the EU in return for best endeavours. Given none of the big decisions have been made, it means the UK will be in a situation where we are negotiating where 27 other countries can veto anything we want. I think that sets us up for failure. Now, given that sets us up for failure and that there is no majority for any option in Parliament, Parliament is deadlocked, I think that it may be the case that the way out of deadlock is to have a new referendum with a new set of questions to find out how we can chart a course for our future. How confident are you in the government's capability when it comes to no deal and how bad do you think things would get for people watching this? Well, um, for 45 years, we have been entwined with the EU, not just in terms of trade, in terms of scientific research, in terms of medicines, in terms of companies that rely on supply chains. Unstitching that in two years is just not feasible. The government can plan for no deal, which it is. It is the responsible thing to do given that the default option in the withdrawal agreement is that we leave without a deal. But it is deeply undesirable as an outcome. The very idea that we are having drills at our ports when we are not under threat from an external foreign enemy should tell you how bad this could get. Now, Sam Gima's responsibilities when he was a minister included the Galileo satellite project that the UK has been building with the EU. And he said it was that experience trying to untangle uh, Britain from the project and what he thought we would lose that convinced him that he needed to give up his career. He says he hates being an ex-minister. He was quite a high flyer, but he thinks now it would be a dereliction of duty if MPs didn't try to alter course. And some 200 MPs across all the parties across Leave and Remain have written to the Prime Minister today saying that they will not allow her to go to the no deal position. There's another group of MPs looking to put down an amendment on some finance legislation which would lead possibly to a US style shutdown of government. So an incredibly difficult situation here once again for Theresa May as she starts the new year, just 11 weeks away from that Brexit day. All right, thank you for that. Our correspondent, uh, Vincent McAvenny there in London. Uh, Stephen, you were reacting as we were listening to mm. what was being said. OK, idea of a referendum, uh, what, what is your take? It would destroy democracy in Britain. Absolutely kill it over there. You only have to listen to what people are saying is, I will not vote again. 
I will, some would say, I will vote for Jeremy Corbyn just to punish the Remainer Tories so that we can get out the Tory MPs who voted for them because they know that the only thing that uh, Corbyn could do is raise taxes for the rich. And they'll say most people who voted for Remain were the rich in the UK. There's a class divide, there's a social divide, there's an old and young divide, and this would continue that. And what I see, what is utterly disgraceful, is 200 MPs who all voted for Remain in the first place under this kind of silly idea that they believe it's undemocratic not to have another referendum. Actually, what they're doing is saying, you're too thick, you're too stupid, you're too idiotic mm. to those 17.4 million people who voted to leave. We know best, and that is an arrogance that will destroy but, our democracy. But, but, but there is also okay. an element here where those MPs are saying that they do not want a no-deal scenario. Mm. They're, they're arguing that's not what the British people voted for, uh, because, and this is true of the referendum, people may have voted on a principle to leave the European Union, but didn't actually know what the details of that were. I mean, I think Stephen's got a point, mm. uh, which is definitely, you know, this was the largest exercise of democracy uh, that Britain had ever seen. Mm -hmm. uh, referendums are not like they are in many other European countries. That This was only the third ever national referendum. People who had never, ever considered voting for did, and they would feel a sense of betrayal. Mm. But, but, the whole point is we know a lot more about what Brexit looks like two and a half years later than we did back in June 2016. Mm. Sure. And MPs are saying that they do not think that people actually voted for a no-deal Brexit. Well, I think, again, they're slightly incorrect in that because we clearly heard in the debates both uh, the Chancellor and the Prime Minister say that we're outside of the customs union, that we're outside of the single market, that there could be a WTO scenario if this, if this goes through. That is part of Project Fear One. Project Fear One made it very clear that there would be a WTO deal. Mm. And we've even shown the videos of Nick Clegg saying exactly the same thing. So I debated many, many times people saying that, and I campaigned for that. People understood leaving the European Union meant leaving the institutions, the laws, and the market.